workshop near at least five days, but then our difficulties, we have made it uh, into three days. That is why uh, it is only a beginning now. Mm -hmm. It is proud yes. thing. So we already planned for after two months next program. So I request all of you to make use of that so that by this time we already have some more practical experience in using these gifts. So with all that uh, practice, you can ask many doubts and other things. So then the next program, you will have much more stronger. Mm -hmm. But anyway, to conclude our this session, one more. Uh, now I will give a short talk, then we go for Holy Mass. Then in the Holy Mass, you will have a powerful anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then when we come back after the Holy Mass, I will specially pray over every one of you to to have more opening of the stirring of the play. So now, as we were already singing this hymn, I could get a clue out of that. Sing that two lines again. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Wait a minute. See, that's the point. We know, we always pray, Holy Spirit, come, come. But He lives inside us. He lives inside us. He is not simply a power. He is the source of all gifts. <laughs> he is the source of all the gifts. So our renewed understanding or more and more understanding of the Holy Spirit itself will, uh, it itself is needed. Yeah? You know, in the Catechism, it is written by a great saint, Saint Gregory of Nazianzus, he said, the whole Old Testament focus on God, God the Father. The whole New Testament focus on Jesus. But where is it focus on Holy Spirit? What is the plan of God of focus on Holy Spirit? Focus on Holy Spirit is done by Holy Spirit Himself dwelling in us. <laughs> so the revelation of Holy Spirit, there are no big teachings, more than all the teachings, Holy Spirit Himself reveal in us, in us, in us. So now, coming to the working of the charism, the important three chapters of the St. Paul's letter is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 and 14. So as I said, they are known as sandwich chapters <laughs> because chapter 12 is like a bread, chapter 14 is also like a bread, in between chapter 13 is the very sweet, either honey or jam or marmalade or cheese or butter, all those things. So that is about the love. love. So at the end of chapter 12, he says, strive, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. Then he says, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. Then he spoke the greatest poem ever written about the love of God by any literature, any genius. That is the chapter 13. 
nobody in the whole humanity, in the whole history, in the whole literature or in the scripture, nowhere anybody has written such a poem like 1 Corinthians 13. You all know this. I am not going to read the whole thing. You must read it. But one thing is very important here. If I have, if I do not have love, I am nothing. So we may have all the gifts, but if I do not have love, I am nothing. So one of the great discovery of St. Therese of Lisieux was this. He says, if I don't have love, I am nothing. So I only want that love. <laughs> that is what we are discovering. Anyway, for our practical purpose, why these charisms are already in us, but why it is not uh, blazing, why it is not flaring, why it is not working. But one of the reasons is the love. We say we love God and God loves us, but you have to examine. Is it enough, the love what you have? Or do you really have that love? That you have to examine. To examine that, I give you a checklist. It's very easy. In this chapter, in chapter 13, word 4 to, word 4 to 8. In the four words, there are 16 checkpoints. 16 checkpoints. So those who are writing, you can write. Otherwise, those who, you can listen this video later on and you can note it down. But it's very simple. Chapter 13, words 4 to 8. Four, four words carry 16 points. How can we examine our heart? Whether do we have that love? First is, love is patient. Now, you make a list later on. Number one, love is patient. So, against that you find out, am I patient? How many percentage I am patient? You write it down. Then you will get how much more love you need. Correct? So, first point is, love is patient. So, you write there, love is patient, then there, what am I? How is my situation? How many percentage of mark you get? Are you 100% patient? Or 50%? 75%? 40? 50? Who sincerely put a grade for your situation? <clears throat> Second, love is kind. What is our situation? Am I kind? If I am kind, how much? 100%? 75, 50, like that. Then third, love is not jealous. Ah, this is such a great thing. Love is not jealous. Oh my God. I am not worthy to speak that, but for the sake of learning, we have to examine. Am I... Am I... 100% free of jealous? Oh no, I have no problem. But when somebody more than me preaching and I see that preacher, then only I feel my situation. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody is using such a wonderful charisms, mighty healings, miracles happens, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then only our situation we can understand. So we have to examine but don't worry, if you have that, who don't have, everybody have. So we have to examine how much percentage we have and how to come out of it. The source is the love of God. If you are filled with the love of God, more and more we will not feel any jealous. We will thank God, oh, that a wonderful preacher or wonderful healer. God blessed him with the same Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. We feel like praising God, seeing such uh, charisms instead of feeling jealous, okay? So the more when, so, but we have to examine that. So that is the third. Then the fourth, love is not pompous. So 
we all have some type of these problems, so we have to examine. That is fourth. Fifth, love is not inflated. Now I keep on saying, you understand now, no? Yes. You have to take time tomorrow day after to examine this. Love is not inflated. That is the fifth point. Sixth, love is not rude. This is 100% against the work of the Holy Spirit. If we have a nature, a rude nature, you know, not having compassion and charity. So that's very dangerous for the working of the Holy Then, seven, love does not seek its own interests. How is our situation? Are we seeking our own interest? So then, eight, uh, love is not cooked tempered. <laughs> this is a very dangerous. Love is not cooked tempered. Do you have cooked tempered? Cooked tempered. Some people are cooked tempered. Even those who are having so many charisms have cooked tempered. I, I, I remember a person who is a very renowned person, but when he was on the stage, the mic system was not uh, working properly. He got angry. He threw that mic straight away. And so, <laughs> uh, that is, he could not control. And he blamed that operator and told him, never again this man should be given the work of sound system. He must be sacked, things like that. So, in the public stage, such thing can happen if we are, if we are, <laughs> if we are cooked tempered. So that's very harmful for the working of the spirit or the charism. Very important. And all those who are taking fasting, you have to be very careful. When you do fasting, the first reaction will be you will become angry. That is a way. When you fast, many of our not good things will come up. Therefore, whoever doing the fasting, first must pray in a prayer that you don't get angry during the fasting time. I remember a parish priest say, oh, fasting is very good, but when we were in the seminary, our spiritual director was every Friday fasting, but that day we don't go near to him. <laughs> Because he could be very... <laughs> anyway, so this we have to trim, these type of points we have to sanctify to temper. Love does not brood over injury. Brood over injury. We should forget the past. We should not keep on brood over past injuries. We are, the charismatics make so much of healing prayers we have only the problem. Those who don't have all these things, they have no problem with the wounds. <laughs> we keep on talking about the wounds, 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 never ending. But the Lord has already taken over all our wounds. Amen. He has completed everything. You have to just believe it. Amen. He took all our injuries, our wounds on the cross and He has shown, look at my hands. It is now complete. I am risen. Mm -hmm. All the wounds I have taken over. So that is one thing. We should not keep on thinking about the past. You must believe the past Jesus has already taken over. Keep on thinking about the future. So, love does not brood our injury. Now, how many points? I don't know. Eight, maybe. We're on ten. Eh? Now, next is ten. Yeah. Now, 11 is, it does not rejoice over wrongdoings. So, we surely don't rejoice, but then sometimes some personality problem comes when somebody whom we do not like, when they have something wrong, we feel rejoicing. So, that's wrong. Then, now, but rejoice with the truth. When we see the truth, we should rejoice. That is now 12. Now 7. This is the most uh, important word. Love bears all things. Love bears all things. 
I remember I, in one of, one, of, one of the girls in my team, uh, nobody is able to adjust with her. She was a little difficult person. So everybody came to me one by one say we cannot live with this girl. You should send her away. So when everybody said all are telling, so I took like a uh, granted and I said, my dear, see, we are a community, we are a group, so if you are not able to, if others are not able to adjust with you, what can we do? Therefore, you must go away. Oh, she was crying and crying. Then she decided to go. As she was going, she finally came to say goodbye to me. And then the Lord, and she was going. She was just uh, at the door. The Lord said, stop her, call her back. Eh? And the Lord says, she is surely not acceptable to anybody. That is why at last I sent to you. Oh, <laughs> and even and even if you don't accept her, where can I send her? <laughs> and this word came to me. Love bears all things. Love bears all things. Now accept all things. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I told, I literally asked pardon to her. I am so sorry. I sent you all these things, but I never consulted with the Lord. I never asked the Lord. So anybody come and join, to join in my team, I don't ask any of their history. I ask the Lord, oh Lord, what do you want? Yes, take her. Take him. That's all. I don't look about their past at all. God can do everything. But then finally she is still with me for nearly 30 years. No problem. Wow. <laughs> yes. Can I give a share story on this? Yes. Did she change? No. Sorry. Did she change after that? Did she change after that? Yeah, yeah. Do you mind if I share a very, yeah. very quick story on that? Yeah. And this is the key in every situation. Jesus, why are you asking me to? So it was this priest who was very, very gifted. He set up a new community. He had a community of, of, of nuns, and everything was going lovely. And I think this guy started to visit, and they saw him as evil. And then to add to it, he had a smelly foot. And then the priest said, Father, have you something from his foot? He says, get out of here. You're a pest. And guess what they were doing? They were all praying to get rid of him. And they thought they were brave. We're so good. And this is, the, this is an evil person. So anyway, the more they prayed, the worse it got. And then one day, he got so angry inside himself that he uttered, now the guy was going to he says, I wish this person was never born. And he fell to his knees because he realized what was in his heart. And see, this, everything is a test of your heart. So he got down on his knees, and they were praying for a year and a half. And he, told, he got down on his knees and he says, Jesus, what are you asking me to do? That should be your first result. And then guess what Jesus says? Wash his feet. Amen. So then, two days later, the beggar, what they all saw him as evil. How blind can we be? They saw him as evil and as a beggar. And he came back then, and he knocked on the door, and Father says, I have to wash your feet. And he said, No, 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 you can't wash my feet. And he says, oh, I have to wash your feet. So he got down on his knees, humbled himself, and started to wash this guy's feet. And guess what he saw? He saw the face of Jesus. So how blind can we be? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let, let, let's complete this now. So, these four points here comes in word seven. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Check in your faith. Do you really believe all things? Do you ex love hopes all things? Very important. Hope. And love endures all things. And the last is Love never fails. Love never fails. Love is God Himself. That is the very important teaching of Dominum Bififikandam. Love is a person. God is love. God 
is love. Say everybody. God is love. So love is a person. Okay, so now this is uh, uh, one aspect. Now let's come back to chapter 30. So then the last of that is very encouraging point here is but tell <coughs> when the perfect comes the partial will pass away. When the perfect comes when the perfect comes the partial will pass away. So that is none of us are perfect but the perfect will come. What is perfection? Perfection is faith, hope and charity. Faith, hope and charity. Faith, hope and charity. That is fill me, fill me, fill me. So this, I am telling you, it's very important. It's very important. Now I tell you one of my bad things to tell how our, how the gifts of the Holy Spirit can, can, can be blocked. I don't use that word block, but then it is not functioning. So it was such a situation, a big retreat of priests and religious, maybe about 200 priests and 500 religious sisters. And at the end, if the anointing prayer is going to happen, so in the it's a cathedral. A priest was appointed to 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 expose the monsters. And so I came like a last moment because many priests were standing queue for counseling exercise. I finished one by one and I came running. Then I told the singing group, come on, come on, you start singing. Now the address is good. So one girl said, no, I will not sing. She was not obeying me and she was a little angry with me and suddenly I become angry. Why? Why you don't sing? Okay, now you never sing. Come on, get out. Something like that I said, I don't remember. But I was so much anger. And then others began to sing. The father exposed the Eucharist. And now I am, I must pray for the anointing. But anointing is not coming. I said, my dear friends, the five days retreat is over. Now you are all going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us thirst for the anointing. I become like frozen, like frozen. Completely cold. Absolutely no anointing. I said, what is this, Lord? And the Holy Spirit said, you are the reason. You are full of anger. How can I flow through you? What? I? Yeah, I know. I am the reason. But I never thought such this anger can be so dangerous. So then I knelt down there uh, in the uh, altar, Eucharistic Lord. The priest is in front and sensing. I knelt down here behind the altar. I said, now what do I do? You must uh, repent and confess. What? Now confess it? All the priests are waiting for the anointing and now you want me to confess. <laughs> Without that, anointing cannot happen. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me. help me. Then he said, don't worry, I will help you. You just do what I say. Yes. Tell the music group to sing another song. Go in front and tell the priest to come to the sacristy quickly for a confession. And by the time they sing the song, you will tell the confession and come back. To be done. Okay. So, in every situation, Holy Spirit is ready to help us, even it's in our bad situation. So, I told them 
sing another song of Holy Spirit, I came in front of and asked, her, tell the priest in his ears, please, please come into the sacristy. I need an urgent confession. Okay, okay. And he came. And I went to the sacristy. First I went to this girl and I asked, pardon, forgive me, forgive me. So by the time she was also in repentance because she saw because of uh, this situation, the whole ministry is paralyzed. The whole retreat is paralyzed. So I forgive her. I ask forgiveness and she also and so we got into peace. And then I went for confession and I had only to confess this one thing. And after confession, after confession, I came up and it was such a powerful anointing. Such a powerful anointing. Then I had to pay more than 300 priests or 200 priests and 500 sisters. I went praying, 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 praying. The story don't finish here. And at the last, this priest uh, given the final blessing and then we were in the sacristy. He said, Thomas, I want to say something to you. Yes. I thought, now what is he going to say? My confession was not coming to He said, Thomas, all these five days of this retreat, I had no experience. But when I took your confession, I got such an anointing. <laughs> so God's ways are like that. Okay, so why I want to say this? Charisms and anointing are in us. But our own sanctification is very important for this. Particularly in the aspect of love, this chapter 13. Chapter 13. So this, every day you have to make a check. Every day. Even every uh, ministry, when you are going to do a ministry, you are going to minister somebody, if you are going for counseling or praying, anything you do before that, examine your heart. Are you in peace? Are you in love? Is the love of God is flowing in you? If not, you repent and do all the needful thing to make this aspect of love. Otherwise, as St. Paul says, if you have no love, you are nothing. He says on his own tale, I am nothing, I am nothing. Okay, now, coming to the point here, after this, again, St. Paul says, in 14, pursue love, but strive eagerly for the spiritual gifts. See, now you see two place at the end of chapter 12, he says, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. Then after completing chapter 13, beginning of chapter 14, he says, strive eagerly for the spiritual gifts. So this is what we are not doing. Oh, spiritual gifts, that's not for me. Or nobody is speaking about the spiritual gifts. Is there anybody speaking, you desire, you pray for spiritual gifts? In this chapter, in these two chapters, he said two times, strive eagerly for the spiritual gifts. We may not be perfect, we may have so many bad things, but yet, we should strive, we should desire. Uh, this Mr. Paul is a good example. He, on the first day, says, I don't get anything. Correct? Or, and hearing that, what a disappointment. Came from far away for this program, nothing. But next day, <laughs> next day you must hear his testimony. <laughs> Who brought it? It was in him. It was in us. So if anybody who have not got anything done, don't, don't 
decide it is the end of it. <laughs> what is a strive? You have to strive. You have to, you have to strive. You have to pray. You have to recognize what area, which gift. Maybe even now there may be many other gifts hidden. So, so day by day, one after another, more and more gifts he will open. That, that is why Jesus said, well done, you are, who are faithful little things, I will make you responsible for greater things. So when he gave you some gift and you are faithfully using that and doing some work, he saw that, then immediately he is going to promote you. He is going to give you more bigger gifts, more greater work. So if any work you have to do, we need greater gifts. So that is why this is very important every day, Lord, Lord, open, open more charism, more charism, more charism, more anointing, more faith. The two things I every day pray is increase my faith and increase my wisdom. That's another point. Love is one thing, but love without wisdom is also big problem. Now must always have wisdom. There are like two hands, you know. Okay. So in chapter 14, he says, strive eagerly for spiritual gifts. I think now we stop for the Holy Mass with a short prayer and we pray for those who are going to drive now far. So we will pray for them. Then uh, others we we prayed over later. So with this understanding, when we today going for the Holy Mass, in today's Holy Mass, the first reading is I think Book of Wisdom. So you think that Book of Wisdom, Wisdom, pray for more wisdom. And the second reading is about the Word of God is powerful, sharper than any double-edged sword. Okay. And then the Gospel is the rich man. I don't know whether they will be today Sunday, so they will say the same reading. Yeah. The rich man came to Jesus and asking, what should I do to eternal life? So all this thing is very important. Eventually, this man, the Lord says, sell out everything and you have treasure in heaven. Then follow me. And then uh, others said, who? Oh. And he could not follow, so he went away. Then others were telling Oh, if this is how the kingdom of God, how do we enter? Then Jesus said, what is impossible for man is possible through God. So let us think that if you feel any impossibility in you, don't end there. Holy Spirit, help us. Okay, so now come, maybe, maybe. And oh, yeah, those who are going, you please come. Now all of us together pray for those who are in need of prayer to go. Now, where is our lady? Yeah. Yes. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, let us pray. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, for all Spirit of the living God, for all elevations, Open all chances, empower her, use her, strengthen her, choose her for the gift of healing in the name of Jesus. Anoint her, open all anointing. Shun 
life is reenacted. Seven mysteries are Jesus' incarnation, his baptism, his uh, public uh, proclamation, passion, and death, four, resurrection, five, ascension, six, Pentecost, seven. Now, see, in the first incarnation is the mystery when we sing Gloria. So when we sing Gloria, believe it is the moment of the incarnation is happening at that moment. Jesus' incarnation is taking place when the angels sing Gloria. Why the angels sang Gloria? Because God become man for all people. So that is the mystery of incarnation. Then when the priest is proclaiming the gospel, that is the moment of baptism of Jesus, after the baptism, he began to proclaim. So baptism and proclamation happened there. And then the passion death. That is the time when the priest 
moved from the Ambu to the altar. He moved from the Galilee to Jerusalem. He moved from the public ministry to offer. So there we must believe he is not only priest, he is also becoming the offering. He become the victim. He become the lamb. You see the lamb and the cross. Who is on the lamb? Who is the lamb? Jesus himself. But he himself is the priest. So when you see today, you remember the priest is Christ and Christ himself is the lamb. And then in the in the offertory, the epiclesis and the um, consecration, the passion, death and resurrection is taking place. And after that, when the priest is lifting up through him, it, him, in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is always, that is the ascension. He ascended. So when he ascended, he took us also to the Father. And then the celebration is actually happening in heaven. What we have here is a extension of what is happening. And then he is giving us the Pentecostal experience by the Holy Communion. He is coming back into our life as a risen Lord and making the mission. Then only the mission starts. Okay, so with this thought, let's go for the Holy Mass and experience him. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.